What's up, college football fans, Mean Green fans, and Missouri fans? Sonoy Valencia here once again with the Mean Green Show, and tonight I'm joined by John Miller. And before we get into all things Missouri preview-related, guys, you already know the drill. If you're a fan of college football, college football recruiting, G5 football, the transfer portal, any or all of the above, consider hitting that like and subscribe button because that is truly all that we talk about. Also, if you happen to agree, disagree with anything that John and I say this evening, let us know in the comments below. Also, if you have a point prediction for the game, Let's see it. Let's see who can call the right score. John, thank you so much for jumping on with me. I know you're a busy guy. How you doing? I'm doing fantastic. I wish my Tigers were doing a little bit better after that uh, Tennessee beatdown this past Saturday. But you know what, Sonoy? It's good to talk to you, man. I really appreciate you having me on your program. Absolutely. And before we get into all of our woes of football season, where can everybody find you at? Well, you know what? You can find me five days a week free on any platforms where you find podcasts. It's the Locked on Mizzou podcast, free on Apple, Spotify, and also on YouTube as well. So check that out and check me out on social media at Locked on Mizzou, where I'm particularly active on Twitter. Awesome. So yeah, what what is what's the climate like amongst the fans in Missouri right now? I know I mean you guys are two and three. Is that that's right? That's correct. Uh, the heartbreaker of Kentucky. I, I watched that one. That one was tough. But yeah, what's the what's the feeling amongst you, you know the all the Mizzou fans? You know, it's interesting. I, I think what a what a difference a week makes because, like you say, Missouri was two and two heading into Tennessee last week, but a couple one score losses. And gosh, the Boston College game, which I attended, by the way might have been even more heartbreaking than Kentucky. I think on some levels, I think Missouri fans felt a little bit fortunate to be in that ball game with Kentucky, but I definitely came out of there thinking the Wildcats were a really good ball club as well. And I think they proved that this past week by taking down the Florida Gators. But gosh, after this past week against Tennessee, it's just really tough to be confident even coming into, quite frankly, a game against North Texas where Missouri on papers favored by 19 points, it's just hard to feel good because right now Missouri has statistically the worst run defense in all of FBS football. So on one hand, I, I think, you know, honestly, I think Missouri fans love Eli Drinkwitz for the most part, but I think after last week, the honeymoon's over a little bit. So we're going to want to see some better results this week for sure. Yeah, well, you'll probably get them if I if I had to guess. So, yeah, so I know this is your guys' homecoming, and you know, and again, kind of just fan temperature check once again here. What I mean, what are the thoughts when when a school like North Texas, obviously, we're a G five school, a B, we're not having the most successful season ourselves, uh, coming coming in at one and three. Is there? I I mean. I'm kind of speaking for you, but I don't feel like a win really does too much for your whatever. It's probably like us beating an FCS school, but is there something that you guys are trying to look for in this game first and foremost? Yeah, I think we'd like to give up less than 250 yards on the ground for a change, quite frankly. I think that's the biggest thing you're looking for. And Missouri, they played pretty – Fairly mistake-free football the first four weeks, but last week they had their most penalty yardage they had had so far in the Drinkwitz era. Just a lot of uncharacteristic missed assignments, I thought, offensively in, in the blocking game. Just, you know, sliding protection one way and then leaving a guy completely unblocked on the other side, that type of deal. But And that's not even to talk about the defense, which missed, by some accounts, a couple dozen tackles so yeah I mean nothing really went right really on either side of the ball but especially defensively I think if you're Missouri you just got to hope that somehow some way you can stop the run this week against North Texas and you guys let your um oh, what was his name um the, your D-line coach yeah Jethro Franklin. Jethro, Jethro mm -hmm. yeah, yeah yeah so and are you guys coming in kind of injury banged up a little bit um, you know, in, in some respects, yes. I, I think overall, Missouri's fairly healthy. Now, uh, one of their starting corners, Ennis Rakestraw, just yesterday in practice tore his ACL. Mm. So so he'll be out for the rest of the season. Uh, an interior lineman, Darius Robinson, was out this past week. 
I think those are probably the two biggest names on defense, but really I, I wish injuries were the excuse on defense, but really it's just been a, a lack of production. The secondary has been okay for the Tigers, but the, the front six, the front seven, if you will, including frankly, your strong safety that's occasionally in the box, they, they're just not getting it done. And that that's really all there is to it. Why that is, who knows? It seemed like to me that Jethro Franklin was a bit of a scapegoat here. Steve Wilkes was just brought on this year for a lot of money. Former Arizona Cardinals head football coach. His first year as defensive coordinator, getting paid a lot of money. You figured he wasn't going to be the scapegoat this early, but I feel a little bad for Jethro Franklin, honestly. Yeah, absolutely. You never want to see see someone lose their job. All right. How, if possible, how does North Texas come to Missouri and steal a win. What what does North Texas have to do to pull that off? I think it's simple. They got to run the football effectively. And I, I think if, you know, based on the, the frankly, not that much that I know about North Texas, I know they've struggled to pass the ball this year, but even if that weren't the case, I think any Missouri opponent, especially an underdog opponent, has got to kind of throw the usual playbook, the usual game plan out the window and run the ball between the tackles at Missouri, in particular between the tackles because, well, you know, as much as I felt a little bad for Jethro Franklin, to be fair, that interior line has consistently gotten pushed back over and over again. And how much of that is his fault is up for debate. But the reality is if you're North Texas, you got to say, hey, we're going to run the ball on first and second down, throw in the occasional play action pass. But I honest to God would, uh, this isn't an exaggeration. If I were North Texas on a standard first or second down, I'm not just going to drop back to pass one time in the first half. If I'm going to pass, it's going to be a play action, make Missouri defend the run and defend that play action pass. John, I honestly, I think this is probably the, the most sincere time I've been holding back laughter on this show since I've done it. Everything you just said, you say, don't drop back on the first down, run it between the tackles. That is all that we do. And it's obnoxious. We are the, <laughs> we are half back dive. You, it doesn't matter what the score is. We are running on first down. You can, I mean, that's just what we do around here. And and you like, know what's annoy? Generally speaking, I'm not for that tactic, you know, but this is a special circumstance. Missouri really is that bad against the run. And, you know, I, I'm a Kansas City Chiefs fan. I'm a Patrick Mahomes fan. I want to pull my hair out sometimes when Andy Reid calls a run play on first down. So I hear you, but I'm just telling you in this game, if you're the mean green, run the football. Well, uh, I think we probably will. <laughs> so, man, I, I don't know how this has ever happened, but it might be possible we could be uh, looking at a, at a lose-lose this week. You, you know, we lose the game, and but maybe we rush for over, you know, 200 yards. I don't know. So, yeah, get your get your uh, prop bets in. Yeah, go to Prize Picks. <laughs> go to BetOnline.ag. Yeah, yeah get, get your get your props in now for sure. Yeah. Take the overs on your individual North Texas running backs. That's for sure. That'd be my advice. I am. So how, about, how about that North Texas quarterback situation? By the oh, yeah, way, yeah, wow. it could help. But notice you guys haven't thrown for over a hundred yards in each of the last two games. Who is going to start? Is has that been settled? And, and how are you guys feeling about that particular spot? Yeah, well, you're on to us. And yes, you're right. We have not. We have not managed to put up over 100 yards in our past two games. It's been like, I think, 90, you know, each game, something like that. And we uh, a North Carolina transfer, Jace Reuter, uh, came in this year. He wasn't there for spring football. He uh, He's pretty talented. I mean, he's was a highly rated four-star out of Kansas, albeit, but went to North Carolina, kind of got played with injuries, lost out to Sam Howell, then came to North Texas and earned the starting spot. And he, uh, against the FCS school that we played, Northwestern State, looked didn't look fantastic. But then it over, then when we played SMU, again, it wasn't his great game. One touchdown, two TDs, but he did pass for over 300 yards, and that was looking good. Then, you know, it wasn't really his best showing against UAB. And kind of once again with Law Tech, it definitely hasn't helped that. No exaggeration. Let me count. Okay, we got Bush, Shorter, Simpson's been banged up. Lorenzo Thompson's been banged up. Literally four of our top receivers injured. 
And I mean, that's again, that's no exaggeration. Obviously, injuries, injuries happen as part of football, but that's that's kind of a lot, uh, you know, for one position group. And our uh, we have a, a walk on who recently got a scholarship, Roderick Burns. He's been our best receiver. And I mean, he's been producing. But again, when it's not even your normal scholarship guy is the leading receiver, that's kind of not really heard of necessarily. Yeah. Not that's, ideal. That's for sure. <clears throat> right. And it seemed right. like coming into the season that that wide receiver group for North Texas, y'all were kind of hoping that was going to be a strength, right? But yeah, oh, like yeah. you say, injuries have really ravaged that group. Oh yeah. If we maybe, you know, I mean, lost maybe just one or two, we could still be okay, you know, but to lose again, four and two will definitely not be playing this game. And I, I don't, there's kind of no real word on the other so it's been it's been it's been spotty, and then our Tory DeAndre Tory is our running back. He's been our punt returner, kick returner, running yeah. back. You know everything. So that's he's I don't know. Hopefully he's one hundred percent coming off a of bye week, but he's been dealing with some nicks as well. But man, who do you think has more rushing yards, uh, Tyler Beatty or DeAndre Tory? I mean, really. Uh, you know, gosh, as many touches as Tyler Beatty gets, you, I, I would probably lean towards him and as explosive as he can be. I have to admit, though, the last couple of weeks, the Missouri running game, I think just the offensive line in general, has left a little bit to be desired. I think one of their best linemen, probably their best lineman, is their right guard, Case Cook. He sat out the Boston College game. Who knows if he was 100% or not last week? He certainly didn't make any excuses with the media this past week, but you know, Beatty, we definitely need a big game out of him for sure. I mean, the thing is he's so explosive in the screen game and the passing game, he'll probably get his one way or the other, but you know what? Can I, so no, <clears throat> excuse me. So no, can I ask you about the tight ends too? It seems like that might be a strength for North Texas, Jason Pertle and also Jake the Snake Roberts. I'm an old school WWF fan, so I'm going there. But, you know, I think considering Missouri's linebackers have left a lot to be desired, I've already mentioned that I think the play action pass is someplace I would go if I were in North Texas. Do you think those two tight ends can maybe do some damage against my Tigers? I hope so. And Jason Pertle, he's. He's, it's kind of strange, like not the most flash off off the screen athletic guy, I guess you could say. But man, he he comes up and makes plays for us, especially on third down. He's kind of like old faithful, and he's he's a this is his super senior year, one of those guys. And right, and um, again, not the flashiest athlete on the field, but he he produces, he he gets open, and is reliable. And then Jake the Snake Roberts, as you put him, everybody refers to him at North Texas as Baby Gronk. But man, he's oh no! Yeah. I like mine better. Come yeah. on now, not another baby Gronk. No offense, pal. But yeah. my goodness. Yeah, but he <laughs> he um. I don't know. Your listeners are probably too young for Jake Roberts, but oh, no, you know we, what? I'm going with it anyway. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I know about Jake the Snake, but no, he's he's young. I mean, this is technically, I guess, his freshman year. I mean, with all of the COVID, you know, re re getting a year and, and whatnot, but he's, he's good. He, you know, we, I'd like to see him get involved more. I would like to see them, you know, do maybe this is the week. Maybe it is, you know, yeah. use two tight ends if, if necessary. I mean, we're down all these wide receivers. My goodness, like do yeah, something. I, I would, I would get both of them on the field. I really would. That makes yeah. a ton of sense. Help out in the running game again, help out in pass protection. When you do those occasional PA deep shots or whatever, that makes a ton of sense to me. Absolutely. And more, one thing where they haven't really utilized Jake, the snake yet, you know, at least not enough to my personal liking as, as a, you know, armchair coach, if you will. But I'd like to see him utilize more in the, in the red zone, especially maybe even inside the 10, because he's all of six, four. He's again, maybe, maybe pushing six, five and probably all of two sixty, if not a little North of that. And yeah, I mean, he's just kind of deceptively yeah. athletic and kind of can get open and that could maybe be I, an option on some of those, uh, those shovel passes yeah. around the goal line that have kind of become in vogue for sure. And he, um, yeah, I would just like to see him, you know, he's, I don't want to say it's a wash, but just get him involved more. He's young. We have another one who he's probably won't play, but 
uh, we actually have a few Christian Christian Lee. He's a good receiving tight end, and we also have Varquise Gums, who Varquise Gums almost looks like um, hmm. He he's 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 he is a flash guy. He's built well, almost like a like a tight end version of Des Bryant. I mean, he's just got like just just that athletic look to him, and and I uh, haven't really seen him, but he's he was like he's a true freshman this year. He was clonking some people in in the scrimmages you know amongst themselves i was hearing and but i'd like to you know get him out there some this year but anyway but that's hopefully we'll we'll see some tight end movement and get it more involved in the pass game we've kind of heard that for the last few years like to see it translate a little bit more but yeah we'll see yeah can i ask you about the, the we've talked a lot about the north texas offense how about the defense i know they're not very good against the pass maybe an okay pass rush on the front end but they are pretty good at stopping the run is is or are those assumptions correct just tell yeah, me about the yeah. mean greens defense a little bit yeah i would say mind. that i would say that's pretty fair phil bennett i don't know how familiar you are with him but he was he was the baylor defensive coordinator at one point he was the head coach at smu and he also did something in arizona i believe but I know, he has a good football resume and he was in retirement, but he coached with Coach Latrell at. Or I'm sorry, he was a coach when Coach, our coach Seth Latrell was a player right. at OU, and back when they won the national championship, all that back in maybe 2002, I want to say or 04, something like that. But, um, he came out of retirement for Coach Latrell, and he, again, the stats don't really reflect it, but he's really got this defense on the right track, and people are very pleased with Coach Bennett and what he's doing. Uh, is it you know where it needs to be yet no but he again has it going in the right direction and if our, our offense probably hasn't really helped that you know being um some quick turnovers here and there and just not staying on the field consistently hasn't probably hasn't really been the the defense's biggest friend but one thing that you don't really mention but they're they're that's kind of what they maybe their best is, is the takeaways uh, i don't have the stats up right now but uh, they they cause defensive turnovers, you, you know. I mean, they 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 can get hot and they can kind of get in a rhythm with that, and so that would be one thing that I guess as a North Texas fan we could just kind of hope that okay, can the defense do something, you know, in the first couple of drives to maybe swing momentum really quick because not even just you guys. I mean, even our own Conference USA point, opponents. Once you're up fourteen, really. I mean, we did come back against Louisiana Tech, but we don't really have too much of a track record of coming back if we can get momentum and have a big shot down the field that would probably be our, our shot but but yeah i think um yeah no again missouri uh just kind of come out there and do do whatever you do whatever you guys feel and uh, you know i wouldn't worry too much so so not you're not exactly sounding like you're you're picking the upsets in a way no, I, I'm not. Um I I I <clears throat> no I'm not I originally put them going four and eight this year. And I don't want really to turn this into a bash North Texas segment, but the loss to UAB, we lost 40 to six to an in-conference game at home. That was really what kind of deflated a lot of us a little bit. But, you know, if we could play you guys close, Miles, a guy who I do a weekly thing, State of the North with on here, we, um, we talk about. And if we could put up over 20 and hold you guys to 42, that would be, I guess you could say, a moral victory going past this game it'd be you know but so yeah that would that's kind of that's what we're yeah, coming funny. in I, for. you know it's funny i'm listening to you it's we both sound like sad sacks right now we're both <laughs> bummed out about our teams i was saying i was like you know what's annoy if you guys ever have a chance to knock off an sec school outside of vanderbilt well by god this might be your chance but you're not you're not exactly making me feel real confident about the mean yeah. green right now so yeah. fair enough i will take yeah. your word for it that's for sure yeah the only fear i guess you guys could have is we did do it to arkansas but we were we were hot and they were not when we did that so yeah arkansas has come a long way in the last year or two it yeah. seems yeah for sure so but yeah i wouldn't i i wouldn't be i guess too concerned so but hey, can i get a point prediction from you Yes, you may. I'm going to I'm going to say that Missouri does win this game. I don't think they cover the spread and it's probably a little bit closer than Missouri fans would like, but I'll say Missouri wins it 45-35 over wow. the Mean Green. 
Well, man, if you ever if you ever come to Den Man, I have to to buy you a drink or something, man. That's <laughs> that's very generous of you. Hey, man, I, you know a nineteen point spread. I, Missouri has not covered a single time all year. Yeah. I, I don't think it's that crazy of a prediction. I really don't. Yeah, I could see us maybe covering, and I'd love to be wrong with everything I'm saying here, but from more of maybe keeping you guys lower, maybe like a. I don't know. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Maybe 28 to 17, something like that. Um, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> but You know what? If that happened, I'd be very pleased with that defensive performance from Missouri and a little bit disappointed with the offense. But I, yeah. honestly, I would take it at this point. I really would because yeah. we got to show some signs of life on the defensive side of the football without a doubt. Right, right. Well, hey, John, uh, anything else we need to touch on before we jump off? You know, I can't think of anything off the top of my head. This has been a really fun discussion, though, Sonoy. Thanks so much for reaching out to me. This has been a lot of fun, man. Yeah, absolutely. I wish we played you guys more often. It's been a pleasure. All right, man. Appreciate it. All righty. Take care.